Hey guys, it is Mersht. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I've got another clan boss showcase for you guys. Um, and as you can see, I'm on somebody else's account. So this is a friend of mine, THB100. He's in the same clan as me. He was struggling for a clan boss team for a while. And he essentially asked me to take a look at his account and try and build him a team. So that's what I've done. Uh, the team that we're going to be doing today, it is a variation of the Mythbuster comp using four champions that have been available for every single player uh, to grab either as login rewards or as fusions. So this is the team that we're running today. As you can see, it can one key Ultra Nightmare, no problem. It's using Demitha and this is probably a very attainable team for people to get, right? So if you're looking at the, the whole team, you've got Heikatun, which is a login champion that you get for free on the account. You have Demitha and Tatura, who were both fusions that were available to everybody. Demitha was an epic for, I think, the Sigmund fusion, and Tatura was the Christmas fusion last year. So there's three champions there that people sort of have the opportunity to get, as well as Ninja, who was obviously given for free as well last year. The only champion that you would have need to pull that you couldn't fuse yourself or wouldn't just get for free is Seeker. Seeker's turn meter boost is just phenomenal for clan boss teams. It allows for some crazy, crazy speed. So it's not really a team that can be swapped out, sort of chopped and changed. This is just an attainable team for people who have been playing the game for a bit over a year that has grabbed some fusions along the way to be able to build and should be able to one key ultra nightmare successfully. This team, as I said, it's not very intensive in terms of the champions that you need. It is a little bit gear intensive just for Demitha, but to be honest, for any Demitha comp, running her at 295 speed is one of the slowest Demitha comps. The rest of them will have her on like 300 plus, 305, 310, that kind of range. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the actual stats for the team. So we will start off with Demitha. She's in two sets of speed gear. If you look at her actual stat, she's got HP, she's got defense stacked. Then to be honest, the rest of it is just 295 speed and we don't care about the rest. She is used in this comp because she provides a block damage for one turn and then she has another ability which extends the duration of all ally buffs. So her in combination with Tatura or anybody else with block debuffs on a three turn cooldown. As you can see, sorry, Tatura here, block debuffs, three turn cooldown. And it's placed for two turns, right? So with him and Demitha having the block damage, it means we can have block damage up for two turns and we can have the uh, the block debuffs on for three turns, which essentially means that this comp will always be affinity friendly. You don't have to change anything. Obviously, depending on the affinity, the, the damage will get worse or better. But yeah, yeah, with the Mythos A1, she just attacks twice and to enable her to get the War Master procs, right? So uh, in offense, we just have standard clan boss masteries down to War Master. And to be honest, it doesn't matter which other tree that you go, whether it's defense or support, these aren't really important too much for Demitha. Um, we just want to make sure we're grabbing Warmaster and a few other things on the offense tree to maximize the damage. I've already touched on him, so we'll go into the second champion, which is Tatura. Tatura, he isn't a crazy DPS champion. He is literally only in the comp to provide the block debuffs, but he does hit quite nicely too. Um, but because with this comp, we don't have any dedicated poisoners, what we've done is put Tatura in a toxic set which gives him a chance of placing a small poison debuff, which just helps towards the overall damage of the comp, right? If we look at Tatura's stats, he is running at 36k HP with just under 4k defense. He is way over tuned with his crit rate and he's got some crit damage just to help with his damage output. And his speed is, uh, it only needs to be 180 with this team. In terms of his abilities, I've already covered his A2, which places the block debuffs and, and increased defense which will buff his damage in turn. His A1 just attacks once and it can place a decreased accuracy. A bit of a waste of a debuff slot, but we can't turn off his A1, sadly. And then his A3, it attacks in AoE. It's not really that useful for clan boss unless you're going for a team where you're not depending on his block debuffs as much and you're using the perfect veil on everybody but him to make sure the clan boss can only target him with the stun. And then his passive, not used for clan boss, but essentially it's like a frost set where it just puts a freeze debuff on the attacker. Then in terms of his masteries, we have just gone for standard clan boss masteries down to war master. And then we've got sort of just generic other stuff, which makes him useful outside of clan boss too. 
Then we're going to come on to the two turn meter boosters, right? So the first one we're going to go over is Hikaten, and she is also in a toxic set for the same reason that Totora is, just in the sense that we don't have a dedicated poisoner. So we've just got two toxic sets to kind of make up for that and just keep that debuff bar topped up on the clan boss, since poisons is just a really free way to get damage in. So with her, all we've done is put her in a toxic set, make sure she can hit 255 speed, which is what is required for this team. Then after that, we've just kind of squeezed in whatever damage we could, right? So attack isn't anything to shout about, uh, but her crit damage is buffed up to about 200%, which again, isn't crazy. Uh, it's nothing that people can't get to. The other stats, again, is we've got 2,600 defense and 38k HP, and that's just to make sure that if there is any turns where the clan boss could stun her early on, before the comp gets into into sync, it's just to make sure that she is not the person targeted because we need her to stay in sync because of her abilities, right? So not only does she have a crazy good aura, which is increases ally speed by 19% in all battles, her A2 will increase speed on everybody as well as fill the turn meter of everybody by 15%, and that's up for a three turn cooldown. And combined with the Mythas increased duration of buffs, this Increased speed will be up on everybody for the whole fight. Her A1 just attacks one enemy once and it puts a decreased speed debuff, not really relevant for clan boss, but that's just what we're using to actually get the poisons out there. And her A3, I believe, is actually turned off for this just because it doesn't do that much damage. But in terms of her masteries, similar to Demitha, we've just got standard damage masteries down to Warmaster on the offense tree, and she doesn't really need any other masteries, so we've just gone this because why not? there's less chance of messing up the uh, the turn meter and increasing her speed and all that stuff. And then secondly, we have Seeker. So Seeker, we'll go over his skills since we're on them. Uh, his A1, it hits like a truck, by the way, for an A1. It attacks one enemy twice. The Provoke is useful outside a clan boss, but we don't use it here. Uh, and then his A2 just fills all the turn meter of all allies by 30% and then puts a increase attack buff on everybody too. And it gives him an extra turn, right? So every time he uses this, he's just A1-ing again straight after. And he does actually scale off of attack. So when we look at his stats, he has got some set bonuses. He's got Crawl and Accuracy, but nothing impacting his speed. With his stats, we've got 3k attack, which is okay. Um, we've got him crit capped, and then we've got as much crit damage as we could squeeze onto the build. We've got the Accuracy there, just so we can use him in other places, like Hydra. He needs to be at 193 speed for the comp to stay in tune. And yeah, the rest of it is just whatever, man. The masteries for Seeker, we've just got masteries to increase his damage down to Warmaster. And defense, not important at all. He doesn't really benefit from the other masteries in Kalamba, so I've not touched them. And then finally, we have got Ninja. So with Ninja, I've already covered him quite extensively in my previous video. But he is a DPS god for clan boss, especially if you've got him booked and stuff. All his damage comes from his abilities, right? So you've got his passive, which when used against bosses, every time he uses all three of his abilities, it will give Ninja one stack. Ninja's, every time he gets a stack, he will increase his attack by 20% and crit damage by 10%, and it caps up to 100% attack and 25% crit damage. His A1, brilliant for clan boss. It puts his decreased defense uh, debuff on... On the enemy it has a pretty good chance of placing at 60 percent but we've grabbed sniper where is it yeah we've grabbed sniper just to give him a five percent increased chance of actually placing it then we've got his a2 which will activate any hp burn on bosses uh, and it will do it three times so it just absolutely shreds through hp because hp burns are based on enemy max hp right uh, then his a3 Oh, sorry, his A2 will also put a perfect veil buff on him for two turns. With the Mitha, makes it three turns, but it's not too relevant. Um, then his A3, it ignores 50% of the target's defense when it's used against bosses. And it will decrease the cooldown of Hail Burn by one turn, which is his main damage ability, so that's always nice to see. In terms of his masteries, we've just got standard damage masteries again down to Warmaster. And then we've gone support tree just to get him some accuracy into the build to make sure he's landing that decreased defense whenever possible and the HP burn whenever he can as well. Uh, we can go Law of Steel because he has no set bonus, which is increasing his speed. Then we've got Master Hexer to extend the duration of his decreased defense and the HP burn debuffs. And Sniper, as I mentioned, just to give him a higher chance of placing them. 
Okay, so before we get into the run, let's look at how the team was actually set up. So we'll start with the fastest person first, which is Demitha. Demitha, she has to start with her A1, then she needs her increased duration of people on her sort of first priority, with second priority being on the block damage. Uh, after the first few turns, this skill order means it will always stay in tune. It means that she's using this in sync with Totora's block debuffs to make sure that it stays affinity friendly, uh, nobody gets stunned, nobody gets any debuffs put on them. Then we will go with Haikatun, who is the next fastest. So she just needs to start off 10 meter boosting the allies uh, and then turn off her A3 because the damage on it isn't great. The rest of it will just stay in tune. She's going to use this every time it's up. Then we have uh, Ninja, who is the next fastest. He can pretty much have any skill order. It doesn't really matter. We just want him to optimize his damage. So we're going to have Hail Burn as his first priority. And then we're going to use Science Slash as the second priority. So every time he's using this, he's taking off a cooldown for Hail Burn, just pumping out more damage. Then we've got Seeker. He just needs to start with his A1 and not turn me to boost straight away. After that, he will stay in tune the whole time. And then finally, we've got Tatura. So block off Tatura's A3 because we don't use it. Uh, then he just needs to start off blocking debuffs for people. So the way it'll work is you'll have Demitha with her A1, then it gives Tatura time to put his block debuffs out, uh, and then Demitha's just going to extend it, so this is up for three turns. After you let it go, just sit back, go grab a cup of tea, grab a coffee, and enjoy. Okay, so here is a run that I recorded earlier. This is essentially just showing the team in action, showing you how it works, what, what the concept behind it is. So if you're building the team, you can look at this and sort of see who should be doing what and when. So Demitha starts with her A1. And then you can just see the comp will fall into place. The turret gets the block debuffs out there and Demitha increases the duration of it. And then Ninja will just start slowly scaling up and pumping his damage out. So in terms of affinities, because of Totora with the block debuffs and Demitha extending the duration of them, this team will stay affinity friendly versus all affinities, including spirit. The other thing that's good about this team is that with the same setup, you can use it against Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare and Brutal Clan Boss. So you can get your three keys in every day, one keying everything. Happy days, you get the max chest for all of them. And considering how available most of these champions have been to people, anybody that's been playing this game for over about a year and a half, I would say should have Tatura should, or if not Totora, another sort of block debuff champion on a three turn cooldown. They will have Hikatum and they will have Ninja as well, as long as, long as they logged in to actually get him, right? So for how easy these champions were to get for people, all round I'd say this is a really solid comp. It's just another easy way to, to wonky Ultra Nightmare. So let's get towards the end of the run now, so we can see what the final damage numbers were. So. As you can see, we have Hikaton doing 9.5 million, so it shows that the Toxic set was doing work. Same with Totora, only doing 8 million. And th these are the two champions who have the Toxic set, right? So most of the damage has come from the Toxic set that we've put on both of them. Just as you can see, there's not a lot of damage in the team all round. You've got Seeker, who was not in a Toxic set. He doesn't have very good attack, but he has quite good crit damage. And he's putting up just under 10 million on himself. Demitha, she is not there for the damage. She is literally just there to enable the team. And then you've got Ninja putting up the big boy damage again with about 45 million from him. So let me know what you think of the comp. Uh, if you want to see any other clan boss comps in action, let me know and I can try and build them. And if you want me to hop onto your account and maybe see what I can do for you, then let me know. But aside from that, I do have a Discord server. I do have a Twitch. If you guys want to join the Discord, ask me any questions, you can do. And if you want to follow my Twitch as well, you can come in when I'm live, ask any questions, sort of live. And I might start doing account takeovers and stuff on Twitch as well, if you're interested. But yeah, I've already gone on rambling enough. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, like and subscribe and peace.